Good morning to all of you out there. I'm Sita Beltran, and you are watching Agenda via Signal TV channels 8 and 250, as well as the Facebook platform and YouTube of uh, One News PH. Today is July 17. I hope I got that correct. July 17, 2020. Thank God we made it to another Friday. I don't know how you uh, folks are uh, doing, whether you are ready to bust out of your homes, whether you have slyly been uh, traveling on the side, or whether you are like some of my friends who are playing Russian roulette. Uh, one guy in particular cannot seem to stop himself from going out to buy a cup of coffee or to buy a donut, etc. So, mag-ingat lang po tayo kasi sa bawat labas nyo ng inyong pintuan, nakikipagsapalaram po kayo. It's Russian roulette out there because uh, they've said COVID-19 is aerosolized. Uh, it can uh, come from anywhere. It's community transmitted already. So, I'm not trying to ruin your weekend, but please, we really need to be aware of this. It's not the government that's going to protect you. It's yourself. We can protect ourselves. We can somehow, by numbers, contribute to pushing down the cases of COVID-19 if we simply limit our movement and, of course, put on a mask, wash. Dito po sa bahay. Honesty, ah. well, hindi po sa mayaman ako, pero di bali ng gumastos kesa naman sa magkasakit. Lahat po ng padala dito, whether bumibili, nagpapadeliver kami ng gamit uh, or may nagpapadala ng gamit, gate pa lang po, may spray bottle na ako ng alkohol. Eh, kung magaling naman yung spray bottle mo, matipid bumuga pero kalat. no So I'm just saying that because... Uh, that is one way of doing it. And of course, I've already put it on Facebook. You put, make, a, make a foot bath and uh, ako ginagamit ko pa rin yung Protect Plus Gold para disinfectant, okay? So in any case, uh, like I said, it's another Friday. And today, we will be inviting uh, people who will be joining us today, three gentlemen. First is a young, young guy named JC Punong Bayan. He's an economist, co-founder of Usapang Eco, Usapang Eco Blog. And uh, the reason JC is joining us is to help us understand or at least to share in the discussion ano ang magiging epekto o ano nagiging epekto ng pagsasara ng mga kum malalaking kumpanya. Uh, there is a saying in the United States, too big to fail or too big to fall. Meaning, pag yung malaking kumpanya, a big company or corporation collapses or closes down, uh, there are certain companies that are so big, government can allow it, cannot allow it to close down because they're employing so many people or their service or their products are too important that it would disrupt the society or the economy. Pero dito pag-usapan natin, paano pag bumagsak yung stocks o yung share o nagsara na yung kumpanya, paano yung mga nag-invest, mga retirees doon sa shares ng isang korporasyon. And then uh, we will speak with Mayor Jerry Trenas of Iloilo City. Uh, if you will recall, Iloilo is one of those na mga pinuri Pinuri po sila. They were praised to high heavens for being so proactive, for being on the ball na nakontain nila yung uh, COVID-19 sa kanilang lugar. Now, problem is, I heard, sabi-sabi, uh, mayroon ding nagsabing uh, doktor na mukhang may mga problema na rin sila. And to top it all, there was an oil spill off the coast of Iloilo City, I think. No? So, We'll find out from Mayor Jerry Trenas, anyare, ano na nangyari dyan sa oil spill na yan and uh, tutuo ba na merong kumakalat na COVID or nakokontrol ba nila up to now. And then finally, we will be speaking with attorney Nagib Sinarimbo. 
uh, of the Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. He's the Interior Minister. Let's find out what's happening to their part of the world. Kasi alam niyo po, uh, lagi nating nakakalimutan yung ating mga kapatid na mga Muslim. Eh, they're also suffering the same problems and same fate that we are suffering, hopefully to a lesser degree. So we'll find out. But in the meantime, let's go to the headlines. Okay, here are the stories from the front page of the Philippine Star. Several private colleges and universities have notified the Commission on Higher Education or CHED that they are shutting down or closing down for the coming school year. CHED Chairman Prospero de Vera III explained that the reason schools cited was the drastic drop in enrollments. De Vera also said that they are currently crafting rules on school closures, noting that current situation has not happened in a long time. President Rodrigo Duterte will deliver his fifth State of the Nation address at the Batasang Pambansa with a limited number of lawmakers and an empty gallery. Senate President Tito Soto said this is to protect the chief executive from contracting COVID-19. However, despite the pronouncement from Soto, presidential spokesman Harry Roque said that there is no confirmation yet on whether Duterte would physically go to Batasan or if he would just deliver the sauna via telecast from Malacanang. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año assured the public that the house-to-house -house search for COVID-19 patients would not be similar to the controversial Oplan Tokhang or the war on drugs. The house-to-house -house policy previously earned flack, but government has clarified that not police officers but local health workers will go from house to house. Uh, they also urged patients to move to the quarantine facilities. And finally, the palace rebuked some United States lawmakers for calling for the repeal of the anti-terror law. Pa the palace says the Philippines is no longer a colony of the United States and that the U.S. congressmen must not meddle with the country's systems. Malacanang is also relying on the country's judicial system when it comes to the issue of the law's constitutionality. The court will rule whether the anti-terror law violates some provisions of the Philippine Constitution or not. Okay, so there you go. Those are the stories from the Philippine Star front page. And uh, as I was doing in the short intro earlier, uh, we are bringing in an economist, J.C. Punong Bayan, to help us sort all of these uh, issues related to closure of big companies, closure of media companies, and the impact of our image, uh, the impact of this to our image in the international market. J.C., magandang umaga sa'yo, ginoong Punong Bayan. Magandang umaga, Sir Sito. Okay, uh, umpisa na natin. Uh, yung sunod-sunod uh, na, no? yung uh, Rappler, uh, nagka-problema na, may kaso na si Maria Reza, yung ABS-CBN nagsara na. Pero hindi tayo, inter uh, well, hindi, hindi natin focus yung pagka-media nila. Ang concern natin is, number one, kasi alam mo, na, mahilig ako manood ng mga international newscasts and uh, channels And nagkasunod-sunod eh. Una itong si Maria Reza, talagang nag-circuit speaking engagement. Halos lahat yata ng international channel, news channel na alam ko, ay eh, na-interview siya. At hindi yung mga two-minute fame. Ah. Ito yung mga masinsin and the long, uh, very long interviews. And it did not look good for the government. And then the anti-terror bill ay nakasama ang Pilipinas sa mga special reports of countries 
na napapag-usapang inaabuso yung COVID-19 para ipatupad yung uh, militarization nila. And now, finally, here we are with the ABS-CBN closure. Hindi na natin pinag-uusapan yung franchise closure na. Now, the other day, I saw a report regarding the stock market situation kung saan bumagsak yung mga share value ng ABS-CBN, JC. Uh, pasensya ka na, mahaba yung pasakali ko. No? Pero after this, sa'yo na lahat. Uh, eh, ang problema... Sabi ko, paano na yon? Ang dami kong alam na nag-invest ng kanilang retirement funds sa ABS-CBN. Maraming empleyadong ABS-CBN na bumili ng stocks sa uh, kumpanya. What happens to those investors and what is the big picture impact of this on on business, the economy, etc.? It's all yours, Mr. Punong Bayan. Yes, Mr. Sito. So, Uh, nakita nga natin na ang laki ng binaba ng shares ng ABS-CBN no? simula nung Friday kung saan 14.78 pesos per share, bumagsak yun ng hanggang 12.7 na lang. So mga around 14% ang binagsak. So mm-hmm. uh, ang laking amount ang, ang nawala sa ABS-CBN. Pero we have to know, Sir Sito, na for some time, bumababa na talaga yung shares ng uh, ABS-CBN dahil nga dun sa uncertainty uh, mm-hmm. dahil Matagal naman na na inaatake ni Pangulong Duterte yung ABS-CBN so hindi na bago ito sa investors. Pero ngayon nga na may permanent na somehow yung uh, closure dahil nga walang franchise renewal ay ang daming uh, nag-withdraw na kanilang uh, investments sa ABS-CBN at kaya bumaba dahil sa lower demand yung uh, share price. Oh, J- JC, quick, quick question lang. Eh, pa- paano yon So kung nagsara yung kumpanya, regardless of anong kumpanya, kung magsara yung kumpanya, ano nangyayari sa shares? Uh, na, bali parang nag, nagiging bula? Uh, it, it becomes zero value? Kasi parang sino naman ang bibili? Nagsara ka na eh. Mm. Kaya nga Sir Sito, nung uh, Monday, nung July 13, ay yung Philippine Stock Exchange ay kinailangang isuspend yung trading kasi gusto nilang bigyan yung mga investors ng sufficient time to be able to uh, calibrate their investments and talk to their uh, uh, mga, mga consultant. For example, uh, kung anong gagawin nila kasi syempre uh, malaking dawok ito sa kumpanya at pati dun sa shareholders. So, kinailangan isuspend yung trading. Uh, oh. Pero at the same time, Sir Sito, ay Uh, yung kailangan natin banggitin na yung shares din ng GMA, yung main competitor, competitor ng ABS-CBN, tumaas din. So, mm-hmm. uh, 15% yung kinaas ng share price ng GMA nung Monday din. So, nakita natin na merong implications ito sa competition even at the level of the stock exchange pa lang, sir. Okay. Pero, uh, actually, sir, ano... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hindi, go, hindi, kasi Or, eh, 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 pakisagot muna yung unang tanong ko, JC. O paano na? Kunyari, shareholder ako. And I'm not, no? Uh, I never bought shares and I never buy shares in any company. Uh, the question is, paano yun kung may share ang tao, uh, ano, pupunta sila dun sa Lopez's, sa uh, opisina ng ABS-CB, ABS-CBN, at sasabihin, oh, balik niyo pera ko, or, or sorry, ganyan yan, sugal yan, eh. pumusta ka, nagsara yung kumpanya, talo ka. O sinara yung kumpanya. More Nako, wag kang ganyan, JC. <laughs> Himasin ang internet ni JC. Okay, okay. May delay ka lang, bro. Yes, sir. So, okay, okay. Uh, medyo, bakit ba ganun? Okay, let's uh, reset, JC. Uh, no, because uh, I think it's a valid concern for many people. Uh, marami po akong alam, bago pa lang ako nun sa channel 2, nadidinig ko na yan eh, na may mga retirees na bini, ano, bumili na lang sila ng shares of stock kasi sabi naman nila, okay naman itong kumpanya na ito. It's like investing in Meralco, San Miguel, PLDT. Siyempre, stable, stable yung mga kumpanya. Uh, minalas lang ang ABC, ABS-CBN kasi napag-initan sila, okay? Uh, whatever the reason. Pero uh, the problem now is, paano yung mga taong bumili ng share of stocks doon? Uh, I, I really have no idea kung paano ang labanan dyan. Okay, JC, nandiyan ka na ba ulit? Yes, sir. Sorry na wala. Okay. Oh, so, paano yun? Mm-hmm. So, ayun, sir. So, 
yung mga investors matagal na nga nilang nakikita itong uh, trend no kaya marami na nilang decide months before na na uh, tanggalin yung kanilang investments kasi ayaw nilang mga malagay sa position na kapag ka nagsarang na nga ng tuluyan ng ABS-CBN ay biglang maglalakon ng parang bula yung kanilang investments okay so if it's not ABS-CBN let's just say it's any other company uh, big or small when the company shuts down or is shut down kung may shares ka Sorry ka na lang. Ganun, ganun ba yung batas niya? No? Pretty much, sir. <laughs> so, okay. kailangan talaga ng investor. Kaya, you understand, sir, na uh, meron talaga implications ito dun sa business climate sa Pilipinas kasi uh, meron nga uncertainty ngayon tayo dito sa pandemic. Dumagdag pa ito na may mga kumpanya na inaatake ng gobyerno at bigla nalang uh, nagsasara uh, dahil hmm. nga at the way di uh, sa poli- politika etc. So understandably many investors are worried dun sa investment climate sa Pilipinas. So this problem goes well beyond ABS-CBN. Okay, now ma- my question is this kasi if I listen to guys like Sunny Dominguez uh, and the and the economic team, ang sinasabi nila, oh, nothing to worry. Uh, actually <laughs> dapat uh, ano na tayo, middle middle income, middle class family, blah blah blah. Uh, mm-hmm. ganda ng rating natin sa Moody's. Uh, ano yan? Uh, trying to paint a pretty picture. <laughs> well, if you ask me, sir, bukang ganun na nga kasi even Fitch, sir, one of the credit credit rating agencies, nag-raise na sila ng red flag about this ABS-CBN franchise rejection. Sabi nila na this uh, could be a key impediment to foreign investor sentiment. And uh, funnily enough, itong credit, credit, credit ratings, uh, this is something that the economic managers have been uh, obsessed about, if you will, uh, in the past mm-hmm. couple of months. Sinasabi nila na ito yung isang kailangan nating tignan pero well number one uh, I think overblown yung uh, importance uh, attributed to credit ratings in, in mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, the developing the country hindi ganun kalaki yung importansya niya uh, kaya nakakapagtaka na doon sila nagfo-focus pero having said that uh, mm-hmm. kinakabahan pati yung credit rating agencies and we might be able to expect na baka magkaroon tayo ng credit rating downgrade because of this And at the same time, yung uh, ating rankings when it comes to global competitiveness and ease of doing business, all these could be affected by the uh, franchise rejection of ABS-CBN. Okay, uh, sabihin na lang natin na magkatoto. Sana wag naman. Ha? At uh, I pray to God Almighty, I sincerely pray to God Almighty that that does not happen. But uh, if Fitch is correct, if uh, Moody say so, etc., at nagkaroon tayo ng downgrade sa credit rating, eh hindi ba panayang utang ng gobyerno ngayon? Uh, we are borrowing uh, in the trillion, you know, billions ba o trillions? Eh ang tanong, uh, does, that, does a lower credit rating mean na uh, we will pay higher interest or mas mahirap umutang? Well, kapag uh, mataas yung credit rating natin, sir, mas dadaling umutang ang Pilipinas. And right now, kailangan talaga ng pondo ng gobyerno kasi mm-hmm. for the past several quarters, ay, well, for the past several months, uh, we've been operating on a budget deficit. So yung pong uh, kita ng gobyerno, kulang talaga sa dami ng mga ginagastos, especially ngayong pandemic. So mm-hmm. naintindihan natin na kailangan umutang ng gobyerno left and right. And in fact, in just the past uh, couple of months, ay... Uh, mahigit 500 billion pesos na ang, na ang bagong utang ng Pilipinas from multilateral agencies like World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and uh, other sources. So, uh, yung credit ratings to some extent, sir, nakakatulong siya. And in fact, uh, I would advise the government na ito yung panahon kung kailan kailangan uh, tayong lumikom ng pondo dahil marami nga tayong pinagkakagasasan dahil sa pandemic. Pero oddly enough, parang medyo nagtitipid yata, sir, <laughs> itong economic managers natin. Ayaw nilang gumasos when it comes to economic aid. Um, ayaw, example, ayaw nila. Sabi, saan, kuk- saan kami kukuha ng pambayad sa uutangin para may panggasos kayong lahat? I mean, I, I respect that. no? I respect that. That's being prudent. That's being very conservative. But uh, what is your argument for that? Kasi kadalasan, nadidinig ko lang congressmen, congresswomen na nagsasabing stimulus package. Eh, hmm. uh, alam mo, eh, ewan ko kung totoo ito, JC, no? medyo nasyak ako ano nabasa ko. 17% pa lang daw nung uh, SAP ang talagang umaabot sa lipunan. 
ma- nabulol, maraming nabulol o ewan ko kung saan pinarada yung pera. I mean, then you're talking about stimulus package. Uh, do you sincerely believe that if the government even borrowed that 26 billion or whatever, how, many, how much money they were talking about, na it will actually go into good use in the economy and private business? Well, sir, Sito, ito yung panahon kung kailan kailangan gumasos ng gobyerno. They have to pull out, pull out all the stops. Kasi mm-hmm. maraming nakakailangan ng tulong from the poor, from the working people, from and even businesses. Yung umiiyak na nga, sir, yung alos maiyak na yung isang undersecretary ng BPI recently kasi ang daming mga lumalapit sa kanyang businesses pero wala silang pondong maibigay, wala silang ayudang maibigay. At hinihintay talaga ng maraming agencies yung stimulus packages kasi without that, ay wala silang mabibigay sa mga tao na kailangan ng tulong. Uh, having said that, sir, marami namang nakapila na stimulus packages in Congress, including yung Arise Bill, yung mm. uh, Cures Bill. So uh, may, alf- may alphabet soup, sir, ng mga uh, uh, stimulus packages in the pipeline. Pero uh, kailangan, ng, kailangan months ago pa yun pinasa kasi ayaw nating umabot sa punto na nagsasara na left and right ang businesses Dahil kung later on, kung wala na itong pandemic at magre-recover na tayo, ano pang i-recover natin kung nagsimatay na yung businesses uh, in the first place? And nakita na nga natin in the, in the case of ABS-CBN, medyo iba yun kasi sinadya na ipasara yung ABS-CBN in the middle of the pandemic and uh, dumadagdag siya dun sa economic woes natin including yung unemployment rate tulad, tulad nung nabanggit mo sir ay uh, uh, through the roof na yung unemployment rate natin uh, tapos ngayon pa, 11,000 jobs ang uh, nanganganib na mawala dahil sa closure mm. ng CBN. So, ayun sir, parang uh, when you look at this from all angles, parang uh, mali yung timing ng pagpapasara ng ABS-CBN kasi nga nakakatawa kasi yung gobyerno ngayon, sabi nila magtatayo sila ng one-stop shop sa ABS-CBN para tulungan daw yung mga mawawala ng trabaho. Eh why not, uh, uh, bakit pa kasi natin kinailangang ipasara? ang ABS-CBN mm-hmm. in the middle of the pandemic. So, from coming from the economic perspective, sir, uh, mali talaga yung timing. Uh, so, dumadagdag yung ah, hirap yung na mga... Yung sinasabi tayo. mong one-stop shop na sagot ng Malacanang dahil nawal, 11,000 na nawalan ng trabaho, uh, do you believe that it's just a political propaganda or is it adding <laughs> insult to injury? Kasi... Alam mo, ang hirap paniwalaan na ganong kabobo ang tao eh. Na gagawa ka ng ganon, matapos mong tanggalan ng kabuhayan, isara yung kumpanya, biglang pupunta ka doon at sasabi mo, and then magtatayo kami ng job fair para sa inyo. I mean, what's going on here? Well, yun nga sir, alam naman natin lahat na merong underlying politics behind all of this eh, na hindi lang naman siya issue na, uh, na sa corporate thing or uh, public policy thing, kundi merong politics behind this. Pero it just it does put the government in an odd position na they're destroying 11,000 jobs uh, on the one hand, pero at, on the other hand, merong ad- additional pressure for them to create 11,000 jobs to supplant hmm. yung mga na sila mismo ang sumira. So, as I said, sir, parang mahi- mali yung time. But, but JC... At, uh, are we just talking about 11,000 jobs here in a politically unpopular organization? Kasi parang sabi, sabi yung mga napapanood ko abroad, sabi ko, iba tama nito. Uh, masisira tayo dito. And I'm not being pro abs Ben. I just, as you pointed out, and many have pointed out, wrong timing, wrong, wrong, wrong approach. Kasi parang kung yung mga, kung yung mga ibang oligarchs daw, eh, tinakot mo at pagkatapos pinadalan mo ng mga diplomatic uh, representatives yung mga oh sige mag-usap na lang tayo asu- ayusin na lang natin dito sa cha- sa ABS-CBN eh talagang tinuluyan uh, how widespread is the impact of this Mm-mm. tama sir na hindi lang 11,000 jobs ang nanganganib kasi uh, yung 11,000 jobs, ito yung mga direct employees ng abs cbn so including mga talents, mga writers, and production crew. Pero alam naman natin na abs cbn being the country's largest media organization and the uh, big presence in the corporate landscape, ay umaasa siya sa maraming outsource industry. So paano na lang yung mga makeup artists, yung mga personal assistant, yung mga 
caterer, yung mga accountant and drivers. So, merong cascading, may domino effect certainly, sir. At uh, inaasahan natin na lahat ng mga nakapaligid na industry sa ABS-CBN maapektuhan. So, the job losses uh, could well go well beyond 11,000. Okay, so uh, recap lang tayo para hindi tayo maligaw. No? Uh, first of all, I asked you about about the, its impact on on shares. Sabi mo, uh, kung noon pa nag-umpisa nang mag-unload yung mga investors, siguro ang hindi na lang makaka-unload talaga ay yung Lopez Group at saka yung mga uh, talagang uh, ABS-CBN internal na wala na silang pag, paglalagyan ng, ano, ng kanilang shares. Now, impact on stock market itself. Uh, pagka ganito ba, kasi sinara ka mo yung trading for, uh, yung ano, yung trading ba tawag doon, uh, pinull out mo na yung sa ABS-CBN, anong impact nito sa trading, sa stock market and sa, sa shares? Yes, sir. So we have to note, sir, na yung stock market, it just represents a fraction of the economy. And in fact, may mga instances, sir, na yung movements in the stock market are not necessarily reflective of what's going on in the real economy. So medyo may caveat dun, sir, na kailangan na tignan lang natin yung stock market to a certain extent. Pero certainly, okay. informative siya kasi uh, tumitingin po kasi investors sa future. So for example, in other countries, nakita natin na yung stock uh, indices ay tumataas in the middle of the pandemic. And this is because uh, ang, nakikita, ang tinitingnan kasi nila yung situation several months into the future. So for example, kung may balita na meron ng dinedevelop na uh, vaccine, ay makikita natin may uptake ang uh, stock market. In the Philippines... Uh, okay, kung may balita ang may bibili na raw ng frequency... Well, uh, isa, well, ibang issue pa yun, sir, na uh, sinasabi nila na baka may mga nakapila na or sabi ni oh. uh, Representative Marcoleta ay uh, baka big, ibigay daw nila yung frequencies ng ABS-CBN sa more deserving na player. Pero oh. understand, sir, this has impact uh, a huge impact on competition. And I think uh, one of these days, baka mag-comment yung Philippine Competition Commission on the implications dun sa uh, media landscape. Uh, kasi, ay, 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 na nga eh. kasi dati there were two major networks Ngayon isa na lang uh, Kaibigan din naman natin sila lahat Pero in terms of competition um, what, how, how does that change the landscape? So nakita natin sir na yung market share, market share ng uh, GM8 uh, Tumaas to uh, 63% according to a recent survey by Nielsen And at the same time ay tumaas din yung market share in the aftermath of this. Uh, pero, uh, yun sir, in many, in many places in the country kasi sir, ay ABS-CBN lang yung source of uh, information, whether via TV or radio. So, uh, aside from competition per se, ay meron din siyang impact dun sa consumers themselves na bigla na lang ay black screen na lang yung makikita nila or white noise na lang yung maririnig nila sa radio. So, for example, when it comes to uh, knowing information about um, market prices or job opportunities or the pandemic response itself, ay parang you're starving people of the information they need, especially in the middle of the crisis. So, hmm. In the soon nag-uusap sir yung effect sa competition pati sa consumer welfare at uh, may mga nagsasabi nga sir na baka may nakapila na na, na papalit sa ABS-CBN kailangan bantayan yung sir kasi uh, yun nga I mean uh, sinasabi nila na baka may gumamit na raw dun sa frequencies din for educational purposes kasi mm. uh, the things here is that uh, meron na nga sir remote learning ang DepEd in August Tapos sa uh, ABS-CBN, as, as we all know, ay uh, meron siyang mag educational shows at ma- malawaking reach niya. So it could have been a very valuable partner in disseminating information, especially for the benefit of students. So tingnan well, natin, that, sir. That, yeah, that's all water under the bridge. The company is closed. The jobs are lost. Uh, 11,000 plus plus, uh, sabi nga nila sa tourism plus plus, are now going to have to look for new sources of income. Now, uh, in terms of information, tama ka, para kang na, uh, basically inalisan mo ng isa pang tagapagsalita para sa pamahalaan in terms of public information. Now, uh, in, in terms of the economy, uh, overall picture, uh, anong impact ng ganitong uh, pangyayari? 
Yes, sir. So we have to note that the economy right now is in the middle of a recession or a sustained economic downturn. For the first time in more than two decades, sir, I uh, lumit yung ating gross domestic product or GDP in the first quarter. Lumit siya by 0.2 percent, and economists foresee na in the second quarter ay baka mas malala pa dahil nga sa mga sunod-sunod na lockdowns. So, uh, so it ties into the uh, narrative na marita talaga yung timing kasi uh, ah, habang pag nawawala ng trabaho yung mga tao ay wala silang kita at wala silang panggastos na kailangan nga natin na to uh, revive the economy as soon as possible pero paano mo gagawin yun kung tinanggalan mo ng trabaho yung uh, libo-libong mga tao. So meron siyang epekto yung yung unemployment problem ay nag-feed into the consumption spending problem and until uh, mawala sir yung uh, virus uh, yung yung uh, ma-flatten ma- ma- yung curve so to speak ay hindi natin pwedeng asahan na bigla na lang magre-revive yung economy in the coming months kasi nga the economy Philippine economy is composed primarily of consumption spending at uh, pag hanggang hindi nawawala yung confidence ng mga tao na lumabas at bumili ng mga bagay, pumunta sa mall, hmm. kumain sa restaurant ay uh, uh, hindi magba-bounce back yung ekonomiya natin. Eh, so at the tapos at in the middle, middle of that ay tatanggalan mo ng kita yung uh, libo-libong mga tao. So, mali talaga yung time, sir. Ang tanong ko, JC, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you're the right person to ask, but what sort of job creation can we expect or, I mean, should we even expect job creation given the situation of pandemic? Kasi meron akong na-notice, JC, uh, kahapon eh. Uh, akala ko, sa totoo lang talaga, base dun sa daldal na nadidinig ko na pataas daw ng pataas ang COVID cases, baka daw bumalik sa ECQ, ang expectation ko, babalik talaga sa ECQ. Pero hindi. We were retained at GCQ. And ito talaga, ano, uh, pinustahan ito ni Secretary Carlito Galvez. And it made me think, eh, parang siguro hindi na kaya eh hindi na nila kayang bumalik sa ECQ unless it is really a medical crisis na talaga. Kasi pag hindi, pag sinara natin uli yung ekonomiya, baka matuluyan na. Uh, uh, what is the situation of the Philippine economy in those terms? If uh, it came down to choosing between ECQ and GCQ, uh, closing down the economy and not closing down the economy, what would happen if we were forced to go to ECQ again? If you ask me, Sir Sito, uh, kailangan ng lock, panibagong lockdown. Kasi uh, hanggang, as I said, uh, itong health crisis, so meron na tayong twin crisis right now, yung health crisis and economic crisis. I think, Sir, mas matimbang yung health crisis. Kasi mm. hanggang hindi, natin na flatten For example, if you look at Vietnam, Vietnam right now has zero new cases for the several past several days. Mm. At uh, doon ay uh, libre na silang safe na buksan yung kanilang ekonomiya. Kasi mm. nababalik ulit yung confidence ng mga tao to do their usual things. Pero sa Pilipinas kasi dahil nga na late yung reaction ng or yung pandemic response ng gobyerno ay uh, nawala na sa atin yung uh, crucial window of opportunity by which uh, we could have contained the pandemic. So because of that, I, we're all paying the price of the government's uh, inaction in January and February. So right now, siguro, I think the best we can do is uh, just battle on. Uh, I think yung gobyerno, they, there's room to spend a lot more, Sir Sito. So hmm. from where I'm going, they're not spending nearly enough. Uh, compared to what we uh, sh- we should be spending. Uh, uh, what, kasi, ano bang ano bang problema JC kasi I mean uh, honestly no parang it, dito sa utang at gastos uh, I kind of and you have to forgive me for this but because of I, I'm old school guy I never uh, I really really avoid borrowing. I, I hate credit. Uh, I it it feels like parang may baril sa ulo mo the whole time no. So uh, I, on this one, I'm with Sunny Dominguez. Na kung hindi kailangan, kung may iwasang umutang, hindi tayo utang, etc. And also Carl Chua of NEDA. Pero kung umutang at gumastos, hindi naman ba tayo babagsak? Won't we end up get uh, end end up in the uh, situation we were with the World Bank after Marcos? 
na for decades we were paying all the money that was borrowed, half of which were stolen by corrupt government officials. Yes, sir. I think uh, what's missing dun sa narrative ng economic team, sir, ay uh, sinasabi nga nila that we have enough fiscal space, so to speak. In other words, uh, we could actually afford uh, to incur more loans, uh, especially right now, na ang dami kailangang paggagastusan. So, in my opinion, sir, I think ito yung panahon kung kailan we should be... Kasi we... Uh, the, for the longest time, we have been saving for the rainy days. Pero yeah. I think ngayon na may rainy days na, kailangan na natin, kailangan din naman ay gasusin natin kung ano yung naipon natin dahil kung hindi ay baka magsimatay ang libo-libong mga negosyo at yung mga tao mismo. So I think uh, medyo misplaced yung uh, reluctance to spend. I think uh, kasi in, if you look at other countries' experiences ay uh, uh, talagang buhos ng pera at uh, Ito yung panahon kung kailan hindi tayo dapat masyado mangamba sa deficit or sa debt. Kasi uh, yung pinaka-importanting uh, masolve natin right now ay huwag hayaan ng mga tao na mamatay at ng mga negosyo mamatay because of the pandemic. So that's the uh, thing that... Yeah, we but but uh, before, uh, last question, JC, kasi parang na-realize ko, parang may contradiction in, in the concept. Eh. Kasi sinasabi mo... Malala yung ating uh, COVID-19 cases. In fact, sobrang lala. Number one na nga tayo. Eh. Number one sa dami ng kaso sa Southeast Asia. Ngayon, uh, sobrang dami. Pero on one hand, uh, guys like you want us to spend so much money on the economy. Pero saan mo gagastusin yun? Kung mga tao naman ayaw nang lumabas, takot nang lumabas. At uh, malala na yung ating... Uh, where, where would you spend the money? My last question. Mm. So a number of things, sir. So I think pinaka-importante yung ayuda. So ayuda sa mga mahihirap kasi millions of Filipinos are really suffering right now. Hindi sila makapagtrabaho ng ayos. Kailangan nila ng ayuda para mabuhay, <laughs> basically. So milyong-milyong mga Pilipino ang nanganib, sir. And then secondly, I think yung aid for businesses. Kasi yung kapag ka namatay ang isang negosyo, ay hindi lang yung nego- ang, hindi lang negosyante ang uh, problema kundi pati yung mga empleyado nito. And as I mentioned earlier, sir, ay kailangan later on when we revive the economy, anong i-revive natin kung nagsimatay na yung mga negosyo? So I think very okay. urgent yung ayuda para sa mga mahihira, mga gawa, and ba- mga negosyo. That's a very good point, uh, JC, and uh, thank you for your inputs today. Uh, kahit pa paano, I'm sure medyo na, may nasagap na kaalaman ng mga uh, viewers natin. And uh, please uh, keep me posted, updated sa mga ginagawa mo, mga sinusulat mo because uh, we need to see everyone's perspective here. Thank you for joining us this morning, JC. Thank you, Sir Sito. Okay, that's uh, JC Punong Bayan, uh, economist and co-founder of the podcast Usapang Econ. Uh, ayan po, no? Uh, pagpasensyahan nyo kung... Uh, Medyo parang back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, tama si JC, milyong-milyong Pilipino ang naghihirap, hindi makapagtrabaho, maraming negosyo are operating at only 30, maswerte na if they're operating at 50% capacity. And if this keeps going on, uh, those businesses will be uh, less and less will and will close. In fact, a friend of mine who operates a chain of Christian bookstores, he simply had to close down uh, another another branch or I think his uh, one branch. And pag minalas, baka madagdagan pa kasi una, hindi na masyadong lumalabas ang tao. Number two, oh, tuloy-tuloy naman yung charges for rental. And number three, eh, uh, wala. Wala namang uh, maaasahan pang iba yung uh, kawawang kaibigan ko. So, ayun, pakapikapin na lang siya kasi sabi niya, hindi na ako makakain. Ayun, joke yun, pero ganun yun. We'll go for a quick break. And when we come back, let us go to uh, Iloilo Mayor Jerry Trenyas uh, and uh, find out kamusta na sila here on Agenda.
Okay, you're still uh, watching Agenda here on Signal TV channels 8 and 250, as well as One News PH platform on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, alam niyo, bago nag COVID-19, I would uh, go on approximately 20 to 25 trips all over the Philippines as part of the uh, BMEG uh, Fiestahan team. Umiikot kami all over the country, nagtuturo ako sa pagbababoy. Lahat ng mga maling ginagawa ko. Eh, uh, one time, someone came to me and told me, Kuya Sito, pwede ba mag-Tagalog ka na lang or mag-English ka na lang? Huwag ka nang magbisaya. Sabi ko, bakit naman? Eh kasi yung bisaya mo, halo-halo. Sabi ko, what do you mean halo-halo? Eh, may Cebuano, may Ilonggo, may Palawenyo. Mag-Tagalog ka na lang. So, anyway, uh, that's my intro for our next guest. Uh, ewan ko kung tama yung maayong adlaw sa imo, Mayor uh, Jerry Trenyas ng Iloilo City. Sir, good morning. Ah, tama na yan, no? Ah, pero kung um, umaga, pwede mayong aga. Mayong, uh, mayong aga. Better, no? Better. <laughs> Ang mayong adlaw will cover uh, uh, sa umaga, sa hapon, sa gabi. Okay. Uh, in ed, in any case, I hope it will also cover the state of affairs in uh, Iloilo City. How are you and how is Iloilo City, particularly sa COVID-19, Mayor? We have, uh, I think as of last night, uh, a total of uh, uh, 38 uh, uh, active cases. Uh, more than one half of these are coming from the LSIs and the uh, OFW. Okay. And uh, uh, so far, we have two deaths. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mayor, uh, I'm really uh, shocked to hear that. I'm sad to hear that. Because uh, if I remember the last time we spoke with you, uh, Halos COVID-free na kayo sa Iloilo. Uh, you were being praised for the fantastic work uh, you and your team and the Ilonggos have been doing. Uh, what happened? What, what created this spike? Well, uh, first of all, there's a lot of OFW and the LSIs who have been arriving. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of them uh, uh, turned positive. No? Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, my position is, as I have always said, uh, we are open for LSIs and uh, OFW. Uh, they are residents from uh, Iloilo, and they they want to come back. Uh, we should uh, find the ways to uh, uh, take care of them. Uh, we have uh, facilities up to uh, 500 plus. And I think uh, at the moment, uh, 480 uh, beds are still available. But uh, in the next uh, few days, I think starting uh, tomorrow, we are expecting uh, more LSIs coming in. Uh, the, the province has not uh, has come up with a letter asking uh, IATF not to allow uh, LSIs in the meantime because they do not have sufficient quarantine facilities. But in so far as the city is concerned, we are ready for them. We will uh, accept them. We will uh, place them in our quarantine uh, facilities. We will test them immediately upon their arrival. And uh, we will uh, feed them. Uh, three times a day. And uh, as long as uh, we still have beds uh, available for them, we will continue to accept them. Okay, uh, Mayor, Mayor Trenas, uh, is the, so technically your cases in uh, Iloilo City are primarily imported from coming yes. in. Uh, wala pa kayong community transmission o meron na rin? Meron na rin, no? Uh, I think uh, two weeks ago, uh, two or uh, three weeks ago, uh, one of the hospitals here had uh, community transmission, local transmission, and mm-hmm. uh, we had to lock it down uh, for, uh, I think, uh, seven days. 
uh, until uh, all the uh, staff were tested, all the patients. And uh, we just have to watch out uh, for uh, uh, cases once in a while. No? Uh, mm -hmm. the, the arrival of the LSIs, uh, the locally stranded uh, individuals and the OFWs, and the slow uh, turnaround time of the uh, DOH for the test has resulted to, to some uh, uh, spikes in the numbers of the uh, cases. No? Okay. Uh, there's another hospital uh, which uh, treated uh, uh, a small boy, I think a 14-year-old boy for a fracture, needed to be operated. And uh, after his swab, uh, the results came out uh, positive. And all the other doctors uh, were also uh, had to be swabbed. No, but, uh, you know, sometimes I'm asking myself, how did this happen? Because uh, the boy came from one of the most remote uh, mm. municipalities in Iloilo. But, uh, uh, just the same, it happens. Uh, we just have to take care of ourselves. Okay. Uh, Shigur, it's really good that I'm talking to you because you have been in the forefront and uh, your group has performed with excellence. Pero ang hirap na kasing humanap ng makakausap dito sa Metro Manila. Uh, everybody is so busy, uh, so uh, tied up. Uh, what, what is the situation with quarantine? Uh, kasi may darating na LSI or OFW, tinest nyo, and they test positive. Uh, when, th when that happens, uh, you quarantine them. Th does that mean that after they've gone through quarantine and they survive, wala na silang COVID talaga? Hindi na sila nakakahawa? Or hindi, hindi rin kayo sure? We're not sure. No? Pero alam mo, Sito, if I may, I think really... Uh, uh, the problem is really, uh, uh, and I'm very sorry for saying this, because uh, Secretary Duque has been a friend. Mm. I, I knew him since the time of uh, PGMA. Yeah. Uh, I was mayor also at the time, and he presented to me the, the uh, benefits of uh, uh, enrolling more and more of our residents to uh, uh, PhilHealth. Mm. Up to the time, my last term in Congress, I was uh, uh, a member of the Commission on Appointments and we confirmed him. You know, the problem really, uh, Sito, is that in our fight against COVID-19, it is really the uh, medical uh, uh, requirements of uh, fighting this uh, virus that should prevail. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, Secretary Duque has not provided uh, the, the leadership and uh, the initiatives no? F uh, coming from the DOH. And uh, we see now the, the security cluster uh, uh, taking uh, precedence. Uh, our, our, our enemy here is the, the virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think the presence of... Uh, 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 armed uh, policemen or the SAP will stop uh, the virus. Uh, if only uh, the, uh, the uh, health uh, uh, requirements as uh, to be enunciated uh, by uh, the DOH uh, prevail, then uh, I think we, we, we will not be the number one uh, uh, top notcher in uh, the whole of COVID, COVID cases for COVID. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean I understand your pain, uh, Mayor uh, Jerry. Because uh, ako binabanata na ako ng ibang tao jan. Masyado raw ako ng uh, good friend ni uh, Secretary Duque, best friend ko raw, etc. But uh, I, I share your sentiment that uh, the militarization of uh, our government's campaign is not the solution. Now, uh, how are you? What are you doing in in your in your city? Because uh, 
I, honestly, I miss your city. It, it is so nice. It's so wonderful. It's so developed. Uh, how are you doing there uh, economically? Uh, and, and of course, regarding the containment. Well, Sito, uh, uh, the, the businessmen are hurting. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I, I asked some of my friends who are doing surveys, mm-hmm. and uh, the number one uh, reason why uh, there are no uh, people in the, in the restaurants or in the malls is that uh, people are afraid. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the lack of money is only secondary. Two weeks ago, I, I brought my whole uh, city council around the, the city mm-hmm. and, uh, we, we uh, went to all the malls uh, and uh, ate in one of the malls just to show that uh, uh, everyone is uh, uh, using all the uh, medical uh, uh, requirements and protocols. Yes. But, uh, you know, people are really afraid. No? Uh, we cannot uh, do otherwise. Uh, unless we can test and the results will be out fast, then I think people will still be afraid. Okay. Now, wh- what about Iloilo City? Uh, are you dependent on the national government for testing? Because uh, if you recall, Marikina City... Nagpagawa na sila ng sarili nilang laboratory uh, and uh, San Miguel, nagpagawa na rin ng sarili nilang laboratory. It seems that that is the general direction. Uh, what about Iloilo City? Uh, Iloilo, we have started already construction dito, no? And uh, mm-hmm. uh, once the uh, laboratory is ready, we will be able to test about uh, 400 to 500 a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but aside from the laboratory of DOH, uh, we also have a uh, uh, private uh, laboratory, uh, Calimed, and uh, I am starting to uh, uh, send the specimen ready to them. No? Mm-hmm. As long as the, uh, uh, they fall under the prescription of uh, DOH. What is the quality of your isolation uh, facilities kasi in in uh, Tacloban City uh, our friend Alfred Romualdez said hindi na ako nagpapagawa ng quarantine facility inuupahan na lang namin yung mga hotel at yung mga motel so that the tourism sector also has some income kahit na 50% lang uh, in Iloilo what what is the standard for quarantine isolation for uh, OFW, uh, OWA pays for the uh, uh, hotel rooms of the OFW. Mm-hmm. So uh, all the uh, uh, OFWs uh, who uh, return are uh, in uh, the hotel rooms. For LSIs, uh, we, we are using uh, uh, one of our facility, uh, the Jubilee Hall, which is uh, air-conditioned. It can accommodate up to 120 and uh, if there is an overflow, we use some of the uh, schools because we have a total of 500 plus uh, uh, beds for the LSIs. But again, I said, as long as the results will be out uh, early, I don't think they will have to stay very long. Uh, it is very unfortunate that uh, uh, some of our uh, LSIs had to stay uh, in uh, quarantine for so long. Because uh, results are not out even after uh, 14 days. Wow. So, uh, uh, yan ang, ano, ang, ang concern. No? Mm-hmm. And uh, ang, ang backlog, uh, Iloilo City has been doing uh, mass testing also at the same time. No? Yeah. So, we tested our uh, tricycle drivers, our uh, jeepney drivers, our market vendors, our... Uh, uh, traffic enforcers, uh, city hall employees. Uh, and then there's a backlog now here in uh, the uh, laboratory of about uh, 4,000 uh, specimens. No? Uh, 4,000? Yes, 4,000. Okay. I, I, I really think, Sito, uh, 
uh, the way to fight this is really to to mass go mass testing because yeah. uh, the the virus is invisible uh, no matter how much uh, armed forces we use mm. uh, tanks that we have in the streets mm. i don't think we will be able to uh, uh, fight the virus with tanks I think we're copying the U.S. version too much, and uh, it, we're going to pay for that. But in any case, uh, what about the isolation of uh, suspected COVID cases? Kasi yun ang mandate ng DILG, sinasabi sa inyo na pag may mga COVID cases dyan, hindi naman daw kailangan pulis ang mag-house to house, pero kailangan yung health workers need to go house to house to find people with symptoms and take them out of those homes. Do you agree with that? with that idea that those uh, with symptoms or umuubo, may trangkaso, will be pulled out? Because some people are saying, kung umuubo na yan, kung may symptom na yan dun sa bahay na, malamang at malamang, yung mga kasama sa bahay, may tama na. Well, I don't agree. First, that's against uh, the uh, Bill of Rights. Uh, I think even under a pandemic, uh, we're supposed to be a constitutional government. Mm -hmm. uh, second, uh, how can we look for asymptomatic patients? Because in the first place, they are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, we will need a third eye to be able to identify asymptomatics. No? So... Uh -huh. I do not know. I I I, I do not want to to uh, pass judgment on uh, the. Uh, so it goes back. It goes back to the say to your first point. We need mass testing. Uh, yes. And if you we might do more, we need to have more testing centers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think uh, government should uh, invest here. Uh, we are thankful that uh, the national government gave us a special era of one month. Part of that is going to go to the uh, laboratory that we are uh, constructing. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, government should encourage more local governments uh, to have more testing uh, centers. Mm -hmm. Because uh, my, I will be sending my, supposing the, the new uh, instruction is now to send our uh, BHW all over the city, our, our barangay health workers together with the uh, nurses from my city health and go around the city and look for asymptomatic. You know, that's... Uh, oh, well, symptomatic, that, yeah. They said symptomatic now. Symptomatic. Hmm. So, I do not know. Okay. Some test uh, and if we don't test them, we put them in our isolation centers. I, I don't, I don't know. This yeah, is uh, now time for uh, the flu season. Yeah. So people, who, all uh, people will be having flu. So we will be overwhelmed in our all our isolation centers. And then the question comes back, Sito. Yes, Suppose sir. we will not go with our health uh, personnel. What are we going to do? Exactly. They are, uh, put them under arrest? Uh, under what uh, law? Yeah, and you know, uh, that's a good point, Mayor. Because in sa Manila, they've been arresting minors and arresting the parents of minors who were found uh, outside of their residences. And while we respect the law, it is creating a back uh, public relations backfire of sorts. Ngayon, medyo, I'm sure that if that carries on, whatever uh, goodwill the uh, the mayor of Manila has uh, built up, he is going to squander because of all of these uh, problems. In any case, uh, please allow me to go to another topic kasi nagre-request yung news group namin. Uh, nagkaroon daw ng uh, oil spill dyan uh, because of a barge. Uh, what is the situation there, uh, Mayor Trenas? Uh, Nagka-oil uh, spill dito, I think, uh, two weeks ago. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, after I uh, uh, went around the evacuation uh, centers, there's about 360 plus uh, families who were uh, evacuated because of the strong uh, smell coming from the bunker fuel. Uh, and I was not uh, satisfied with the uh, uh, facilities in the evacuation center. Uh, AC Power, AC Energy, which is the owner of uh, uh, the barge, uh, one of the subsidiaries of Ayala, yeah. uh, brought all the uh, uh, evacuees to uh, the hotels in Iloilo, uh, including the Marriott. No? Mm-hmm. So our uh, evacuees stayed in uh, hotels. Uh, some of them have uh, returned already to their homes. Uh, the... Uh, Coast Guard and the NR reported to me that uh, the uh, uh, bunker fuel uh, have almost been uh, uh, collected already. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, uh, after recovery, then we uh, bring back uh, the, the whole environment uh, back to the uh, original state. Uh, some of the mangroves were affected and uh, we will see what are the uh, uh, legal uh, liabilities of the company uh, considering that they were using an acetylene torch on a barge which was uh, full of bunker fuel. I do not know whether that is allowed. Second, uh, they did not have sufficient uh, booms, spill uh, oil spill booms around the barges uh, when it happened. So uh, we will continue to sit down with them so that we can uh, uh, talk about it. Okay, well, uh, I do hope that that is really contained and that AC Energy really uh, puts in every throws everything at solving that problem because uh, your, your city, your province has gone a long way in uh, tourism environment And that would be so tragic on Mapabayan. In any case, you're in charge. And uh, again, Mayor Jerry, thank you very much for being very transparent, being very vocal. Because as I've always said, we are not here to criticize government for criticism's sake, but to help make them understand that certain things need to be changed because we all don't know everything. We have to cooperate. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Sito, and uh, thank you to everyone. Okay. That's uh, Mayor Jerry Trenas of Iloilo City. And uh, ayun po, uh, hindi siya nagtimpi. Sinabi niya na bagamat kaibigan niya, si uh, Secretary uh, Pingoy uh, Duque, eh, he has to call a spade a spade. And uh, du- Secretary Duque needs to be visible, needs to be uh, up out there yeah, and I, unfortunately hindi character talaga ni Sec Duque yan eh matagal ko na rin kaibigan nitong si Secretary Duque parang mas gusto pa niya iba yung humarap ang problema Sec Duque ang humaharap ngayon puro naka military uniform puro mga may political ambition ay eh, sabi nga ni Mayor Jerry Trenas we need medical leadership Excuse me, medical solutions, etc. And uh, that's and medical information. Hindi po yung uh, sige pag hindi kayo nagpakabait, hindi kayo nagstay at home. Uh, babalik namin kayo sa ECQ. Let's go for a break. And when we come back, balitaan naman natin dun sa parting Mindanao. Kamusta naman sila? What's going on there? And uh, Uh, we will find out from a the minister Inter- minister of interior of barm here on agenda
You're watching Agenda on Signal TV channels 8 and 250 as well as Facebook, uh, One News PH and on YouTube. Now, uh, we here on Agenda try as best we can to get representation of issues all over the country. Kasi po ang Signal TV ay national, it's all over the country because it's all via satellite. And siyempre gusto rin naming nalalaman yung mga nangyayari uh, from Luzon to Mindanao, from uh, Apari to Holo, sabi nga ng mga iba. No? And uh, at least once a month, we also reach out to the Muslim community, the different personalities, para malaman natin yung kanilang perspective, kanilang concerns. And for today, we are doing the same. Team Agenda uh, reached out to the Interior Minister of Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. Uh, and the minister he was a member of the Legal and Technical Working Group of the MILF Peace Panel uh, and also helped in drafting the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Let's speak with Attorney uh, Interior Minister uh, Najib Sinarimbo. Uh, sir, good morning. Salam alaikum. Okay. Uh, kamusta naman po kayo? How are things in BARM? Uh, what is the situation? I guess the first question would be, uh, what is the COVID situation for the region? So far, uh, comparatively, uh, medyo mababa naman sa amin. Uh, except merong sudden spike. We lost the audio. Uh, okay. We are now. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, we're going to reconnect with uh, there. Uh, we'll yeah, better. Yes, uh, 379 na po tayo ngayon. Uh, uh, can you go back, uh, Minister, yung June, sabi mo, when you started in June? Na off yata yung mic mo? Uh, yes, yun, okay. There, okay. there. Simula tayo first week of June, sir. Nasa yeah. 12 lang tayo ang confirmed cases. 12? Yes. Today, we are 379 po. In the are, yan ba puro imported cases from uh, Metro Manila? Yes, sir. Ang unang nagpadagdag ng sudden spikes sa atin are people from Cebu na mga estudyante na hmm. pinak- uh, dito sa atin nung inalaw natin yung movement ng mga locally stranded individuals. And then last week, merong dumating from Manila na 405. Dito sa 405 na to, 120 ho ang nag-positive nung PCR test natin. Masyadong mataas ho yung um, infection rate niya. Nasa 30% ho ng mga pinauwing ito. Yeah. Now, uh, Minister, paano ba nangyayari yan? Because uh, ang press release dito sa Metro Manila ay bago padala ang mga LSI and OFW, kinakwarantine sila, tinetesting sila, at binibigyan pa sila ng health certificate. Uh, pag landing ba dyan, nai-interview ninyo at nalalaman nyo kung na-test sila o hindi? Merong document, sir. Pero ang malaking bahagi ng problema natin talaga ay yung locally stranded individuals. Okay. Kasi ito ay hindi talaga, uh, hindi ito naka-PCR test. Meron lang ah. sila ng medical certification na wala sila nung symptoms. So wala hong testing dyan sa locally stranded. Ayan na. Tama ka dyan, Minister. Kasi alam mo, yun yung sinasabi ko noon na uh, nagkaroon kami dito ng uh, kasambahay who wanted to go home. Sabi ng uh, barangay, papunta siya sa health center para chichikin for 14 days kung may symptom o wala. At pag walang naging symptom, i-issuean nila ng, ano, ng certificate. 
Because you presume that after 14 days, walang ubo, walang sipon, walang uh, symptoms, walang sakit. But pagdating dyan sa inyo, ng sinwab testing ninyo yung mga LSI, may mga tama, 30%. Yes, mataas ho yung infection rate. At uh, ang, ang danger pa... Oop, oh, nawala ulit ang mic. Last week, Yun, ang okay. talagang naging problema ho natin ay yung mga LSIs na to, hindi pa diretso na naipadala sa amin. So, sa barko, uh, instead na mapunta doon sa mga probinsya, napunta pa ko sa Cagayan de Oro City. Okay. Uh, Minister, paki-adjust ulit yung microphone, yung, uh, yung kable. Palagi ko maluwag lang, yung saksak. Opo. Kanina, maganda na eh. Opo, this one, sir. Uh, sige, pagsiga na natin. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay, go. Naku, nawala la. Ayan. Okay. Yes, sir. Yung last week na naging problema natin, sir, yung oh. pinalaho na mga LSI na bound for Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi, hindi napunta ng straight doon sa mga probinsya na to. Instead, napunta pa sa Northern Mindanao in Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, from there, sinundo pa ho namin para dalhin dito sa mga facilities namin. Uh, so yung, ito, ito yung mataas ang infection rate niya. Ang kasama sa mga concerns namin ay posible na nagkaroon ng contacts ito doon sa mga occasions na nagbingel sila ng mga tao. Mm-hmm. For instance, in the facility in Cagayan de Oro, may uh-huh. mga iba silang nakasama. In the vessel na nagtransport sa kanila from Manila to Cagayan de Oro, meron din sila na mga nakasama doon. Meron din sila nakasama nung inipon sila dyan po sa Manila. So kailangan natin ng magandang contact tracing rito dahil uh, yung possibility na mag-spread siya, uh, masyado hong mataas yun. So fra- inipon sila sa Manila, ilan silang inipon sa Manila? Wala rin po kaming idea. Uh, humingi po kami ng listahan from our uh-huh. counterparts sa Manila para at least makita ho natin. Uh-huh. Uh, wala pa ho kami listahan nun. Wala po ba kayong office sa Manila? Kasi uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't know the answers to this, Minister. No, uh, sig- I'm just hoping that in the discovery of things, solutions and things can be done. Wala po bang office ang BARM sa Manila para sa mga uh, constituents ng BARM? Meron ho kaming liaison office dyan sa Makati. Uh-huh. Okay. But ang problem mo kasi rito, yung pag-manage ng LSIs at ROF hmm. ay essentially merong task group na naka-assign yan. Ayun. Uh, hindi ko member yung mga tao namin. Ayun, okay. Uh, ito ang problema doon. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, controlled by the national and then the BARM, although you are legitimately a region, a special region, yun nga yung sinasabi ni uh, Samira gutok gutok uh, sinabi niya na uh, kailangan yung muslim community represented in the IATF and the national task force so okay so naipon dito yung LSI kinarga sa barko pagdating doon sa barko may iba pang may iba pang dinaanan okay yes, uh, okay may iba pang dinaanan meron ding iba pang kinarga na mga kababayan natin bound for other regions. Uh, okay. Okay, so pagdating sa General Santos, doon pa ninyo sila sinundo. Not even in Jen San Sir, nasa Cagayan de Oro. Ay, sorry, sorry. Si, ka, sorry, sorry, Cagayan de Oro. Medyo nalilito na ako eh. Okay, CDO, sinundo nyo sa CDO. Ngayon, di ibig sabihin yan, meron din kayo mga stopover para kumain, jumingil, etc. Except dito, ho, sir, ay medyo inistriktuhan natin yung protocol para yung probability of it uh, na kakalat pa along the way, hindi na. So pinagbaon po namin ito, may strict instructions kami na idire-direcho po yan pupunta dito sa akin. Okay. Pero bilib ako sa inyo, uh, Minister Sinarimbo, kasi uh, naswab testing nyo sila. So, obviously, may facilities ang bar, may, may logistics kayo. Uh, yan ba under the DOH or the BARM put up its own? Under sa DOH ho. Kasi lahat naman po kailangan i-accredit ng RITM. Uh, mm-hmm. Pero kami ho ang nag-fund 
doon sa pag-acquire ng mga equipments na to. Ah, okay. So, sa inyo, pera ninyo, uh, in, in, ano lang, in-accredit lang ng DOH. Ngayon, matanong ko, uh, sustainable ba yung testing dyan sa BARM? Kasi kausap pa lang natin si Mayor Jerry Trinas at sinabi niya na, de ba, backlog of 4,000 uh, swab tests. Uh, dyan po ba sa BARM, kamusta yung mass testing nyo? Do you have mass testing? And what is the uh, speed or backlog? Dalawa ho ang problema natin dito. Yung mga island provinces na malalayo, halimbawa, Tawi-Tawi, uh, mm. Sulu, Basilan, wala hong testing centers dito. Nakikiusap lang ho tayo, nakikisuyo lang tayo doon sa Sambuanga City, which is outside okay. of the region. Uh, dito sa mainland, kung saan nandun yung dalawang probinsya, ito po yung uh, Lano del Sur at Maguindanao, yung testing natin rito, nangyayari naman dahil pinandi natin yung isang hospital doon sa Marawi City para ma-credit for testing. Uh, pero mababa na yung supplies natin ng mga test kits rito. So kakailanganin na ho natin. At the rate uh, Manila is sending yung LSI sa atin, uh, kailangan ho natin ng additional na supplies dito. Hindi ba yun 1 is to 1 or 3 uh, is to 1 man lang na pag may pinapadalang LSI, dapat bit-bit-bit-bit na nila yung kanilang swab test kits or kasama na ng mga nagmamanage? Yes, sir. I, ang ideal ho talagang mangyari, sir, ay yung whether LSIs or ROFs, itest na ho muna dyan. Kasi yes. yung occasion for mixing and the transmission, doon sa mga, alimbawa, aeroplano o kaya oh. barko, mataas ho masyado yan. So kung hindi natin yan sinegregate yung mga positive at saka potential na positive at saka negative, dyan, mm. pagkakaroon pa rin ho ng further transmission. Yung contact tracing ho ang mahirap dyan. Kasi, alam mo, Minister, mabuti nakausap kita this morning at uh, nag-reach out yung uh, team ng agenda sa'yo. Kasi, uh, nung unang inangal ito, ang, if I remember, ang unang umangal dito was Mayor, Mayor Richard Gomez eh parang sabi, hindi, ano lang yan, isolated case lang yan. Eh lumalabas ngayon na maraming probinsya ang namumroblema kasi para kayong binigyan ng pasalubong, parang ano eh, parang uh, balikbayan box. Pinadalang kayo ng balikbayan box ng COVID na hindi pala natetesting. Ah, uh, yung yung uh, ilo-ilo nagsumulat na sa IATF at nagsabing kung pwede lang tigil niyo muna yung pagpapadala kasi namu ay hindi yung yeah, ilo-ilo province nagsasabing tigil muna yung pagpapauwi ng LSI kasi hindi na namin kaya kayo po ba diyan sa BARM ano ang situation kaya pa ba niyo tanggapin yung mga LSI and OFW or sumulat sumulat na rin kayong itigil muna Sumulat na rin po sir yung mga probinsya natin at sinusuport ho ng regional IATF yon yung position hmm. ng mga province na itigil natin muna. Dalawa ho. One, una kailangan ni sort out natin yung procedure talaga niyan. Pangalawa, kailangan ma-improve yung coordination. Hindi ho pwede na hindi nasasabi sa mga probinsya na may darating eksaktong saan ilaland yan at kung kaya natin, huwag ilan sa mga malalayo. Kasi yung transport niyan, mahirap. And then, hindi pa ho natin naayos yung permission doon sa mga staging areas o kaya transit uh, points. So, halimbawa, nagka-problema tayo dahil ayaw ng Sambuanga na dumaan tayo doon. Hmm. But there's other uh, entry points for the island provinces na malapit except Sambuanga, uh, Sambuanga City. Puno okay. na rin po yung Sambuanga City. And then, kagayan di Oro City, is the only one at the northern side of Mindanao that is accepting yung mga dumadaan sa kanila. But ang danger ho niyan, sa... wala ho silang facility that is able to accommodate yung pumapasok sa kanila. And then the chances of mixing these LSIs na hindi natin alam kung negative or positive, ma- maaaring mag-transmit ho doon sa kanila din. Okay, kailangan bang pumara? Uh, is it because of refueling or overnight? Kasi parang ang alam ko, yung ibang barko pwedeng dumiretso. Uh, hindi ba? Yung Philippine Navy, etc. Kasi hindi naman kailangan mag-disembark 
Uh, pwede namang doon lang muna sa barko kung nagre-refuel and then diretso na. Ideally, dapat po talaga ibaba na natin doon sa uh, port mismo ng mga probinsya. Oo. Oh. Uh, saan ultimate na destination nila. Kasi kung nagta-transfer-transfer po yan, uh, may chances nga ako talaga na magkaroon ng contacts pa. Uh, pangalawa, napupuno rin yung facilities doon sa mga transit na LGUs, yung mga dinadaanan natin. So At saka nagkakalat pa lalo. Uh, ang ma- ma- maiba naman ako, kamusta naman yung ekonomiya dyan sa BARM, uh, Minister? Kasi... Uh, we you know we we are all hoping that with the, with the law in place uh, with autonomy given to all of you uh, unfortunately because of covid-19 i'm sure may may epekto kamusta yung ekonomiya and paano yung kabuhayan ng tao it essentially agriculture fisheries naman ang dito sa amin uh, hmm. and then even na malayo kami doon sa centers uh, nung una talaga hindi kami masyado affected nung covid Dalawa lang po yung naging problema natin. Una, yung agricultural inputs natin essentially are coming from the urban centers. Yun. Uh, kailangan natin yun na merong protocol for allowing yung transport na yan papunta sa amin. The second ay yung produce naman rito kailangan umabot doon sa markets which are essentially the centers also. So yun mm. lang yung kailangan natin i-resolve na maayos. If we get that right, Uh, yung economic activities in the region hindi ko severely ma- maapektuhan. Okay, pero is may kumakausap ba sa inyo tungkol dyan? Kasi ang tagal ng problema niyan eh. Umpisa pa lang ng, ng quarantine, problema na yan ng mga maraming probinsya. Kaya namin maghanap buhay, kaya namin mag-farm, pero kailangan namin yung traktora, yung mga supplies, yung mga seeds, uh, fertilizer. Uh, meron bang kumakausap sa BARM regarding streamlining all of those procedures? Pinresent na ho namin sa National IATF noong una pa lang. Uh, halimbawa, noong first weeks noong lockdown. Uh, I've, so, I've lost you or there. Mad crabs dito, hmm. eh, nag-plummet dahil uh, noong, noong dati, yung regular na, ano natin, na business transaction, araw-araw pinapadala ito sa Manila. Uh, yes. Ganito rin yung mga magagandang isda from the islands. So mm. araw-araw yung pinapadala. Biglang walang walang transport, hindi na maipadala. So sumobra yung supplies dito, uh, hindi naman natin na market So yun po yung una talagang naging problema natin. Okay, so medyo, uh, alam mo, minister, pinalungkot mo ko eh. Kasi isang linggo na akong nananaginip ng alimango. Diyan pala, limpak-limpak ang alimango. Dito, ni putik, wala. <laughs> Tama ho yun. So, I, I think yun yung mga bagay na kailangan ho natin ma- maayos. Pero, pero, uh, pero nag-respond, nag-respond na ba yung National IATF na yan? Kasi I've heard this song time and again. Eh, uh, nagre-respond ba sila? May mga initial na responses, sir, pero hindi pa rin ho adequate yon. Kailangan pa ho talaga nating ayusin. Ayun. Okay, well, hindi kita ipapahama kami, uh, Minister, although ang takot lang nilang guluhin kayo dyan sa BARM kasi kayo medyo talagang independent na talaga kayo. But in any case, uh, thank you for for giving us a clear picture, a clear, a clear situation dyan sa BARM kasi hindi naman po tama na bagamat Muslim kayo, autonomous kayo, eh hindi na kayo kasali sa usapan at sa consultation. And hindi naman pwedeng pababayaan na kayo na bahala na si Batman. Uh, we are hoping na because of this interview, and uh, of course I will try to write it on my column, na and also on Facebook, malaman ng mamamayan that action needs to be taken and hindi lang puro conversation. Thank you very much, uh, Minister uh, Interior Minister Sinarimbo, Najib Sinarimbo. I hope I got your name right. And uh, bless you, bless your family, and uh, bless your constituents. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat po at maganda umaga. Okay. That's uh, Attorney Najib Sinarimbo, uh, Interior Minister of the uh, Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao. And ayan po, no? yan lang ang kagandahan pag yung mga tiga-barmang kausap. Eh. 
walang ano, walang filter, filter, walang uh, they, they say it politely, they but they state it clearly na nagtumatanggap sila ng mga LSI, tinanggap nila yung LSI, ang problema yung nagpadala ng mga LSI ay medyo hindi pala inaral yung kanilang proseso. Now, okay, let's give it to the national government and local governments. We are still learning from this COVID-19. Pero tama po yung position nila eh. Stop! Ayusin muna natin ang sitwasyon. Ayusin muna natin yung mga mali-mali, mga pagkakamali. And you know, just to the some officials who are feeling medyo bugbog na, sensitive, na sinasabi nyong puro na lang criticism. Hindi po ito criticism. Kasi hindi naman kami yung mayroong control kayo. Hindi kami gumagawa ng patakaran kayo. Ayan po, kailangan nila ng far agricultural inputs na babara sa Cebu, na babara sa Jensan, sa Cagayan de Oro. Bakit? Kasi may mga protocol na kailangan masunod. Nagpadala tayo ng LSI, nagpadala tayo ng OFW. 30% infected? Excuse me, that is utter, that is criminal incompetence. Para kang nagpadala ng indulto sa probinsya na wala namang ganong problema. And it's not isolated case. I'm sorry, we spoke to Mayor of Iloilo. He said they have a problem. We spoke to the Interior Minister of Barm. They have a problem. Before that, uh, Richard Gomez said it was going to be a problem, etc., etc. Learn to listen. Don't react. Don't get mad. Makinig kayo kasi hindi naman nyo kami kaaway. At the beginning of all of this, we were all supportive. We have all been cooperative. We have all been law-abiding. Pero hindi pwede po yung dadal, dadali natin sa puwersa, sa uniforme, sa barel, sa tanke, at saka sa sama ng loob. No. Clearly, the IATF is too small a group to take care of the problem. We need to open up. We need to loosen up. And you need to more, listen more, and then just direct. Hindi yung control. Control, you cannot control a virus that you cannot even see. In any case, I won't ruin our viewers' uh, weekend. Please uh, continue to pray for our national leaders. Kahit na may himutok tayo, kahit na nakakainis kung minsan, they are our leaders. Let us ask God to give them wisdom. Let us ask God to give them open hearts, open ears, and remove their hurts and reduce their egos. And I'm saying that sincerely because we all have egos, including me. Kumisan, sumusobra ako. And we just pray, Almighty God, that you would help us, transform us, and direct us. Please bless this nation. And Lord, just for once, ilagay mo na kami sa last place. Ilagay mo po kami sa last place sa COVID-19 cases. Thank you very much for watching Agenda. God bless all of you and have a good weekend.